If you're on an ultra tight budget and looking for something cheap, portable, and classroom or work break worthy, well, first up, Apple's probably out of the picture. Unless you can find one of their iPad Mini 2s used on the black market, or I suppose an iPad Mini 1, you're likely not willing to shell out the extra dough. If you are, then I suppose you can pause this video where it's at and move on to something else. Maybe this video right here, but if you plan on sticking around, chances are you're considering one of two platforms, Windows or Android. Both have their pros and cons, and we'll discuss these shortly, and both are featured in tablets you can pick up on the cheap. The two we'll be checking out today, the Acer 110, which I have a separate review on you can check out right here, and the Pacific Tech 9.6 inch tablet. I actually think that's what it's called, the 9.6. I didn't see a name anywhere else in the description. You probably haven't heard of Pacific Tech Professional, and neither had I, but they offer this tablet right here for 140 bucks US dollars. Okay, not bad. Let's check out the Acer 110. Well, to my dismay, they aren't widely available like they used to be, but I did find a batch of refurbished ones on Newegg for $120. So we've got a price out of the way. Where do we go from here? Let's start with build quality. The Acer 110 features a brushed aluminum back with trim sides, a bulky stance even when separated from its included keyboard, and fairly wide bezels, at least and compared to the Pacific Tech tablet. This one looks and feels completely different. It's sporting a plastic back cover, which you can pick up in either a gold plus white combo or black plus black, a much thinner profile, and narrower bezels on all four sides, but it's a tablet so that shouldn't be much of a surprise. The Acer boasts a wide array of external support including a headphone jack, micro HDMI port, micro SD card reader, micro USB port, and a charging port. On top you'll find the volume rocker, power button, and power slash charging LED. The right side is completely bare and the bottom reveals the keyboard locking inserts as well as the data transfer interface. The back of the tablet boasts two narrow trebly speakers, an Acer logo in the center of the metallic panel, and a 2 megapixel rear camera. The front of the device gives way to the 10 inch IPS display, a resolution of 1280 by 800 pixels, an interesting form factor, it's not 16 by 9 but it's pretty close, a front facing camera whose specs aren't even worth mentioning, but okay, it's VGA, and a windows icon towards the bottom which acts as a home button for pulling up the start menu. I am here with the good old JJ. Hey, buddy. Say hi. I'm probably not holding the camera correctly. Hey, there it is. Yeah. On the Pacific Tech tablet, you'll find a headphone jack, power button, and volume rocker, followed by only a single micro USB port up top, which also acts as the charging port. The back of the device boasts a rather subpar 5 megapixel camera that also films in 1080p, but not efficiently. Here, have a look. Front facing recording is. that's okay. Say hi to YouTube, mama. The back also sports a small door housing three slots, two for SIM cards and one for expandable micro USB storage. Yes, this tablet supports calling and 3G data, so long as the SIM you insert is backed by GSM towers. Verizon and Sprint will not work in this case. I forgot to mention this tablet does have an LED flash as well, the Acer tablet does not, but beware, use it only in a must basis. The front of the Pacific Tech tablet only reveals a single front facing 2 megapixel camera. Unlike the Acer, this one's buttons are all on screen. The screen of course is also here, and it's ironically in the same resolution, boasting the same lukewarm IPS technology as well. Definitely not iPhone quality, if you catch my drift. However, thanks to this one's slightly smaller screen size, pixel density is slightly higher, yielding ever so slightly crisper shapes on screen. You probably won't notice the difference between the two. I did notice that the Acer screen produces much cleaner and whiter colors, whereas the Pacific Tech tablet projects a warm yellow hue. So you've seen what these two look like, now let's find out how each of them performs. The Pacific Tech tablet houses an ARM MT6580 running at 1.3 GHz and a single gigabyte of RAM. It's a quad-core processor with relatively low power demand, but underperforms all around. Just look at that single-core score. 359. 
By the way, that's the Acer on the left still running the Geekbench test, and that's where this leads us next. Windows 10 takes a huge toll on the Acer 110. The Intel Atom Z3735F runs at an equivalent 1.3 GHz, and it's also a quad-core chip, backed by 2 GB of laptop-grade DDR3, but the added stress from something as heavy as Windows 10 32-bit proves too much for the little Atom even when executing the simplest of tasks. Even pushing the lock button requires a few seconds before you get a response. Is it even? There it goes. So yeah, a little too shabby. The Pacific Tablet, on the other hand, I'm gonna call it the Pacific Tablet from now on, responds almost instantaneously. It's running Android 5.1, so not too ancient, and responds adequately to all commands and downloaded apps. The Android experience, however, is limiting in the sense that you can't simply open .exe files and edit documents on legit copies of Microsoft Office. But good old Pacific isn't missing much. I mean, it's not like the Acer can run Office buttery smooth. It takes time to load, open, and even respond from keystrokes at times. It does have access to the Microsoft Store and will play games like Minecraft okay, but that's about it. And Pacific can do the same thing with the Minecraft APK file much better optimized and smoother feeling overall. If battery life's a concern, then the Acer 110 is not the one you should consider. I've only received about three to four hours of screen on time with the Windows Hybrid. And no, there's no expandable battery in the removable keyboard. Pacific's 5000 milliamp battery is much smaller than the Acer's, but the reduced software overhead allows the tablet to reach a staggering six to seven hours of screen on time, at least for me. It varies from day to day, but it's proven to be a much better tablet in this regard. It also charges much faster. Now, what about speaker quality? Uh, you're gonna have to bear with me on this one. I need to run extensive tests on the card using my own personal rig, and it hasn't definitely removed most any CPU bottleneck in existence for any game out there. I've got a Core i7 6700K overclocked to 4.6 gigahertz, 16 gigabytes, and two 8 gigabyte variants of Yale Super Loose DDR4 clocked to 3,000 megahertz. So the rest of this review honestly just comes down to preference. Both are decent in their own respects for their prices, and even though I wouldn't recommend either to any power user, they'd be great for those who enjoy the simpler things in life, YouTube videos and Candy Crush. I actually ended up giving this specific tech tablet to my mom, who's been very much enjoying it. In fact, she wants it back right now, so one sec. She's not super tech savvy and honestly couldn't care less about the price or trade-offs. Words with friends is still her thing and the Pacific Tech 9.6 handles it just fine. As for the Acer, things get a little more complicated. I used it for a while in school until I purchased my Lenovo 100S, which is a full-on laptop but that has a much slimmer profile, but which also has the exact same specifications as the Acer 110, although I'm sure the laptop slash tablet hybrid is appealing to some. The physical keyboard makes it more apt for a document preparing than the Pacific, and it also boasts a single USB 2.0 port, which might come in handy at an unexpected time. Do keep in mind though that you'll have to leave the keyboard on and plugged in in order to use it. As for me personally, I would opt for the Pacific Tech tablet, and let me explain why. It's not because I don't need another low-powered laptop, that would be unfair and biased, but because I feel that at this price point, the only thing you should be considering is an Android or Apple tablet. And yes, that means that I should have spent more than I did on my 100S, I'll admit it. 150 bucks is just too cheap to justify a quote-unquote decent Windows laptop nowadays. Sure, you get the full Windows 10 experience, but at the cost of performance, and that's a huge cost. Save up a bit more and invest in a tolerable laptop with either an i3 or an old i5 or an A10 from the red team for around 300 bucks. Take the Pacific Tech tablet, download Minecraft and Candy Crush Saga, and call it a day. If you like the change up here in the studio, be sure to give this video a thumbs up, give it a thumbs down if you feel the complete opposite, or if you hate everything about life, be sure to click the subscribe button if you haven't already and stay tuned for more change ups here in the studio. I'm sick of doing the same old benchmark routine with cards like this. I want to bring you guys new material, different stuff, and just, just kind of play by ear where we want this channel to be in the foreseeable future. So with that, I hope you enjoyed what you saw. Be sure to stay tuned for the next one. This is Science Studio. Thanks for learning with us.